Well, hello there, all you absolutely magnificent people, and welcome back to another episode of Anecologist Plays, where we talk about nature while playing games. My name is Will, and we are back in Empires of the Undergrowth, and today, well, 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 the Unconquered are going to conquer. But today, we are leaving the Amazon Rainforest, and we are going to go for Straw Clutch, I believe. Yes, this is a swampy one, and we are going to be playing as the Fire Ants. And we're going to go for Vigorous for ourselves. We are going to have two rival super colonies being set up the second one of ours we're going to have them as pervasive we're going to have another fire ant also vigorous and another fire ant also pervasive but there we go two super colonies trying to establish in the same area yeah we'll see how that goes <laughs> and the only thing we are going to change here is we are going to disable upkeep again because well fire ants can form colonies of well, between 100,000 and 250,000 individuals. So, yeah, we are going to have upkeep disabled. And I think that is going to be it, actually. So let's jump right in. Now, when fire ant colonies actually start, most of the individuals will actually be these small ants, these small workers, the minims in essence. And as they get older during the first six months, more and more bigger individuals will develop. Up to a third of a larger colony can actually be the soldiers, basically the, the majors that we are going to have in the bit. So what we are going to do is we're going to start out with mostly workers and then work from there here, pardon the pun. Okay, first of all, we are of course going to just find some food. I think that is actually all the safe food we can get. <laughs> wow, okay. And then we are going to make some little workers here. Because we do need our workforce in essence. Now these little workers are going to be quite pointless when it comes to fighting. But they should be good at just getting some food quickly. I'll be honest, this is not my favorite map. I do battle a bit with it. Okay, that's our sister colony up here. Great stuff. Oh, we've just sent our workers to their doom. <laughs> there was a Galerita by color over here. The false bombardier beetle. That really just messed us up there. Wow, they already have soldiers. Man, oh man. Our sister colony here is doing quite well. Listen guys, we are not fighting, we are just grabbing and running. Okay, that has given us a bit of food. I should perhaps actually have made some soldiers because, I mean, we've got we've got tiger beetles running around, we've got false bombardier beetles running around, we've got a whole bunch of stuff running around here. And we are quite defenseless. But this is the way that it would work. When you'd start out, the colony would be quite vulnerable when they start out and as time goes on then they will become a little bit more of a force to be reckoned with. Now, if you are in an area like we are technically currently playing at, if you are in an area that's experiencing an invasion by the fire ants, oh, there goes the jumping spider, okay, killing our sister colony individuals, okay. Please don't go for me. Okay, jumping spider is going that way, perfect. If you are in an area that is experiencing this type of invasion by fire ants, yeah, this is the point at which you can still control them. Once they really start forming a super colony, that's when it becomes more and more difficult to actually do. Because there are so many individuals, so many sister colonies, all doing their thing. Okay, we finally have a bunch of little workers. As soon as this Galerita over here, the Hooded One, the two-colored Hooded One, the False Bombardier Beetle, as soon as this leaves the area, we can actually get some more food yeah let's head out shall we as long as we do not get distracted by the food over there everything will be fine oh there's a rival colony okay we're just going to run home because if they realize we are here oh we are going to be screwed so what we're going to do now is what we should have done we're going to make some soldiers and we will be able to afford a full two soldiers. Can you believe that? And then we're going to make a mad dash for it. Because we've got some caterpillars down here that we can also get. And we should now be able to actually grab the caterpillars. I think we should be able to make it there. Especially considering here comes our, two first sol our first two soldiers. So now we've got majors and minims, not just minims. Uh, why did you have to go for it? Okay, he's going to die. I was just thinking, okay, as long as we don't go for that larva there, everything will be fine. And then we went for the larva. Okay, don't fight. Just run. Just run. Okay, we lost a few individuals there. That was not a great foraging session. Oh, there goes another one dead. Tiger beetle. Vicious, vicious predator. There's only three food we lost. That's all right. Okay, 
let's now go this way again. Of course honeydew being an amazing source of food for us as a colony just starting out. It's nutrient rich, relatively easy to carry in our bodies. Now we don't we didn't carry it like little droplets like that, but that is of course just to show what that we are carrying, that this individual is actually carrying something around. But we would be carrying it inside our mouths and then just regurgitating it to the rest of the individuals, to the rest of our colony. But it is an amazing source of food. Oh, our food stores are actually full. Let's put three more soldiers down, shall we? And I think we are now going to be under attack a bit by these soldiers over here. Yeah, the pot has been stirred, everybody. The pot has been stirred. Oh, and of course there is a tiger beetle. Oh, and a magnolia jumping spider. Also trying to kill us, but I think maybe, maybe, maybe. Yes. Okay, he's dead. Magnolia green jumping spider. Very good eyesight. Unfortunately, he was able to spot us. No problem. I think the next batch of food we should be collecting is actually down here. I think we should be going for that batch of food and that batch of, of food over there. I think that will be easiest. Safest, actually. Finally. Next up, this section over here. Let's expand our food storage, in essence. But there is, of course, another false bombardier beetle right over here. There is the Galarita by color. Hopefully, we are actually able to show him who's boss over here. He is annihilating us, but we've got a lot of food stored away, which is marvelous. And there we go. We've got a bunch of food again. And then lastly, from over here, and that should just be, uh, there we go, just a bunch of checkered beetles. Checkered beetle larvae. Now, let's see what's happening here. There's a war being waged, kind of here, between these two colonies at the top here, these two rival colonies. And the one at the bottom here is also kind of just hanging around and trying to do something. And we, on the other hand, are, I think, doing the poorest of all. But maybe not for long. So let's actually, I think, let's dig out here. I think we may be able to take out what is here. If there are a whole bunch of checkered beetle larvae again, we should be able to do this. And that's going to be so much food for us. There we go. A whole bunch of checkered beetle larvae. Yeah, they are no match for our vigorous fire ants. Pumping them full of Solenopsis venom. Quite a lethal cocktail of venom that they are pumping into the poor, unfortunate checker beetle larvae. Now, the checker beetles here, they are indigenous to the area that we are invading. We are actually the baddies. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> but this is what fire ants do. Red imported fire ants, in particular Solenopsis invicta, that we are. And at the start of the video, I said the unconquered are going to conquer. Well, that's what invicta means. Invicta means unconquered. And <laughs> the weird thing is Solenopsis means looks like a pipe. So it's the ones that look like a pipe, but are unconquered. And I mean, if you squint hard enough and you look from far away enough, all ants kind of look like pipes. So yeah, I'm not sure why these ones need the distinction that they look like pipes, but they apparently look like pipes. Just getting some stronger soldiers here now as well. And soon we'll have our first tier three soldiers as well. Okay, let's actually head in over here. It almost looks as though, yeah, I think we may be winning. But not due to me, due to my sister colony here being the stronger one. Okay, they really have been kicking some fire ant butt over here. And now we finally have an army that can actually dominate. Which is brilliant. And more and more and more soldiers are joining the fight. Occasionally there is a Suggestia florentina over here. Another technically invasive species now. Uh, doesn't occur naturally in the US. But... It tries to kill us, and then after a short while, it also just dies. <laughs> Does not stand a chance. I do believe our sister colony here is actually invading, so we are going to be taking part of that in that. I think first we are going to try and take some of these aphids home with us. Oh, never mind, this one is dead. <laughs> okay, that means we are going to war over here. Now, Solenopsis Invicta, the red imported fire ant, or Rifas, well, they are a big, big problem, of course, in the US. Because they are highly aggressive, they have a very, very potent venom that they can use to defend themselves against any kind of predator, including humans. And humans do suffer very often from anaphylaxis, like one in every... Oh, okay, we have apparently one. <laughs> apparently, both other colonies were defeated, and leaving us and our sister colony as the only victors, the only survivors in this region. 
Well, no, that is very, very interesting. Okay. But as I was saying, the venom of the Solenopsis Invicta is quite potent. And what, between 1 and 6 in every 100 people. And I just accidentally said main menu. Um, okay. Let's just, you know, reload the previous save before any one of these two were actually defeated. <laughs> oh, wow. This is when we're still doing poorly. Goodness me. Okay, okay. We can do this, though. Yeah, now we just need to remember what we did. I think we went in here next. But between every one and every six people that get stung by red imported fire ants in, U in the USA will actually develop some kind of allergic reaction, some kind of anaphylaxis that they will go into, which is obviously horrible, horrible. I mean, it's a really, really potent venom that they have. It serves them well in the area that they naturally come from, which is South America, where there are lots of other very aggressive, very dangerous ant species also occurring there. But it also allows them to be extremely effective invaders, like they are currently invading the US. And this of course has very very bad implications for the other ant species that are found in the USA as well, which naturally occur in the USA, because they can very easily be displaced by species like the Rifas over here. And here we go once more, trying to defeat the checkered beetle larvae that are in here. <laughs> There we go, I think, yeah, this should be relatively, no, moderately straightforward. Oh, there we go, that was, that was not too bad. We lost a whole bunch of workers, but you know what, that's fine, we've got a bunch of food coming in. This is fine. Now, it will be interesting to see what happens now to the colonists, because, I mean, we defeated, well, thanks to our sister colony over here doing very well, we did defeat them in the previous round we had. Now, oh, we actually had rival ants coming into our colony. <gasps> How dare they? Luckily, we've got a whole bunch of ants that will be made soon. I think they're coming for us again. Yeah, here they come. Are they going to invade or are they not going to invade? That's the question. They're just gathering outside at the moment. I think they're waiting for a critical mass before they actually attack us. I mean, ants are much smarter than we often give them credit for. They definitely should be able to make plans like this and gather in numbers and then head into the rival colony's nest. But look at this. Our sister colony is also attacking the rivals. And there we go. They are invading our nest now. This is fine. This is absolutely fine. We've got a whole bunch of soldiers rushing to the fore. And yeah, there we go. Now, in the natural environment, they do have very, very intense intraspecific competition with them attacking one another. What we are going to have is we're just going to have our workers just collecting food because they can while our soldiers protect the entrance to the nest here. Oh, they're leaving. Okay, cool. Interesting, we did not have that attack by them in the previous bit we played before we defeated them. Not that I took part in that defeating of them at all. <laughs> but if you look at how things would work in these polygonous colonies. So first of all, our queen here should not be the only queen in this colony. There can be multiple queens in a fire ant colony, all pumping out lots and lots and lots of eggs. So yeah, they really are quite invincible, quite unconquered when they really get the production up. But even considering the fact that we should have multiple queens, we can have, as we have here, a sister colony. And we can have multiple sister colonies forming a super colony. And that makes us really a force to be reckoned with. Oh, apparently our food stores are full again, so now this is the point where we start upgrading our ants. Oh, here comes our sister colony. This is the point where the invasion starts. And okay, you know what? I think this is now a good time for us to actually also start taking part in a raid. Once they are raiding again, I think they are heading in here. So let's set food gathering off. We've got 220 in the bank. Let's attack along with our sister colony, because that's what sister colonies would do. They are semi-cooperative. They're kind of all doing their own thing as well. But if they, one colony is doing poorly, what can happen is because they are genetically identical, they can actually help one another out a bit. And in this case, yeah, we are not really helping. We are just along for the joyride. <laughs> Getting ready to eat a whole bunch of little ant babies. Oh, look at that. There is a little salamander over here as well. Shame, he's not going to last long. Now, of course, with fire ants, even salamanders are not safe from our little fire ants here. Eventually, we are going to... There we go. It is dead now. Now, of course, this rival colony uh, knows that its time is basically up. This is actually the pervasive one. You know what? We are going to invade. Because our sister colony is getting ready to invade, we should also invade. 
And here we go. I shame. Yeah. <laughs> they don't really stand much of a chance. There are some soldiers, some nice tier 2 soldiers here, and tier 3 as well, but yeah, ultimately they are doomed because here comes most of our soldiers. Interesting that our sister colony decided, you know what, we're going to attack. No, we're not going to attack, we're just going to gather food. But there we go, the fire ant here is basically, it, the queen is almost dead. Oh, there are some more soldiers coming in though. Interesting, okay, maybe they can actually withstand our attack. May there, no, 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 the queen is dead. Long live the queen. There we go. So a second time we have one. This time we actually did take a bit of an active role there. I wanted to say earlier, I want to say play more, not Lee, and not end level, but you know, there we go. Finally. Okay, we are going to take all the food we can get over here. All the little babies. The larvae of the ants. Now recently Nick and I were actually surveying animals on the property. And when I lifted up the rock, there was, an I'll have a photo up there. It looked like someone spilled rice under the rock. And it was just a whole bunch of ant larvae and ant uh, pupae that were there. And yeah, there were even some queens, more than one queen also present in that colony. That was not, not, not fire ants, those are pugnacious ants. They are relatives of the yellow crazy ants in the same genus as the yellow crazy ant. So yeah, fascinating creatures, highly, highly social, polygonous as well, more than one queen in a, in a colony. Uh, but they can be quite aggressive. They're not very fun animals to have in your garden, I'm, I'm afraid. They are very, very aggressive. Similar to these guys here, the Rifas, they are generalists. They can go for well, whatever they can find, they will eat. And that would make them relatively good potential invaders in an area. If you're looking at the yellow crazy ant, well, they definitely are very, very strong invaders. But in essence, now that we've got our two colonies here, our sister colony here and our colony over here set up, we are going to just expand over time and potentially get even more sister colonies established. Which will mean that, well, shame, any creatures in this area would now be doomed. Any other ant colonies also would be doomed. Like this one was doomed and the other one was doomed. And now what we're going to do is just because we can and because we are an invasive species, we are going to just open this up and kill everything we can find in the nest. That's what we're going to do now, because that's what fire ants do. They are destructive little beasties. Not that they are evil, I mean, animals aren't evil, but the impacts are quite severe. So here we go. Let's see what we have down here. Some biggish creatures, maybe some frogs. Oh no, it's false bombardier beetle adults. Yeah, this, this may be more than we can handle, I'm not sure. We'll see soon enough. There's another larvae of the of the bomb false bombardier beetle dead. Okay, why are you guys gathering food? There's like a bunch of stuff attacking us. <laughs> okay, another larva gone, gone, another larva gone, an adult dead, and another adult basically dead. And there we go. Get on him and sting him. There we go. Well done, well done. But you see, we did start out with some workers, and then as soon as we could afford it, we moved on to bigger individuals, and that is what fire ants would do. They start out with the small ones, with the minims in essence, working with them until they get to the point where they can actually have soldiers or larger individuals, major workers, and then they shift over to them. And it is theorized that, that polymorphism, being able to have more than just one shape, a one-sized worker, that gives them a bit more of an advantage when conditions are unpredictable and when they're under a bit more stress. But if food is plentiful and there's not a lot of competitors, well then that doesn't really give them that much of an advantage, nor is it actually a disadvantage, which I find fascinating. But yeah, that's the way it is. Now there are some big-headed ants that have spawned over here, taking or harvesting some of the pine cone here. And as is typical for a red fire, red imported fire ant infestation, these little guys are now dead. Early but surely they may actually be displaced from this environment. So that is where we are going to leave our little colony here, our fledgling colony. It is now well established and should be able to take over the world quite easily. Now next week, things are getting big. Very, very big. So of course, as always, thank you very much everyone for joining me on a little adventure here. I hope you enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun playing as the red imported fire ants. If you enjoyed the video, please do give us a like. If you haven't yet, please also subscribe. Really great to welcome everybody to the Ecology Squad. And until next time, everybody, stay safe. 
I'll see you all soon. Cheers!